don't need to worry about being far from the ideal because it's really good to have the ideal there. But like where I'm at will like start to unfold. Um, yeah, even if it's just by like a little tiny bit. Yeah, really lovely to be on retreat with you all. Um, I just wanted to start off with a bit of a volume check for people at the back. Is this up a bit more, a bit higher? Is it good? Thumbs up from Jill? Great. Great. If I at any point start to dip volume wise, please do do a like motion. Yeah. And I'll dial it up. Because um, yeah, I think my tendency is to be a bit softer. So let me know. Um, but yeah, ah, the taste of freedom. Um, such an exciting uh, kind of theme to be on retreat with you all around. Um, so I thought I'd start by just uh, reading out the passage um, that Sagrasila introduced us to last night, particularly that section around the taste of freedom. Um, so yes, the Buddha says, just as the mighty ocean has but one taste, the taste of salt, so too has my teaching but one taste, the taste of freedom. And I thought I'd just op open up like a minute or two for you to just have a little bit of a reflection on um, like what does freedom mean to you? Because it's a big, it's a big word, it's a big term. Um, so yeah, give you a bit of space to just have a think. What does freedom mean to you? So, um, as Sagrasila said before the dedication ceremony yesterday, um, this passage comes from a particular text and it's describing the Buddha and his followers. Um, they're sort of meditating in silence under a full moon. Um, they meditate for hours, like hours and hours under this full moon. And then just before dawn is about to break, the Buddha starts talking about his teaching um, in, in the terms of this, this mighty ocean. Um, and he gives these eight strange and wonderful things um, about the ocean, and then talks about how there are eight strange and wonderful things um, about the Dharma, so his teachings. Um, well, his teachings and also the truth that those teachings are trying to point to. Um, so I'm not gonna read you out all eight um, because I think that'll take quite a long time. Um, but I thought I'd share just a few. So if you, yeah, if you want to read a bit more about the full eight, then do come and chat to someone in the team afterwards. Um, and we can definitely point you to where to find them. Um, but yeah, so just a few to sort of kick us off with. Um, so the Buddha talks about how the ocean gets deeper little by little. Um, and he says, in a similar way, the path of the Dharma is gradual. So it's little by little, kind of step by step. Um, he talks about the ocean having many gems um, within its depths. Um, and he says, you know, the Dharma has many spiritual gems, so many different teachings that are like really precious and beautiful. Um, he talks about the ocean being the abode of mysterious creatures. Um, and he has some excellent terms for these mysterious creatures um, that might not necessarily map onto some of the creatures that we might associate with the ocean now. Um, but yeah, you can sort of bring to mind whales, sharks, mysterious things lurking in the depths. Um, <coughs> and yeah, he says, just as the ocean is that abode of those creatures, so the Dharma is the abode of great beings. So of people who have already been enlightened, of people who are on their way to enlightenment, um, of Buddhas, of um, Bodhisattvas, so these beings who are sort of uh, they're like holding back from heading off um, out of this realm so that they can help other beings reach their potential. Um, so yeah, and he also says, as the ocean has this one taste of salt, so the Dharma has this taste of freedom. Um, and yeah, freedom has all sorts of kind of connotations and meanings for lots of us, doesn't it? Um, quite often, 
at least for me, it can be quite associated with like social issues or political issues. Um, and so I thought it'd be good to just kind of specifically state that the Buddha is using it in quite a specific context. Um, so it, and that context kind of goes beyond what we would maybe normally understand as freedom. Um, so in Pali, which is the ancient Indian language that's kind of closest um, to what the Buddha would have spoken, it's this term vimutti. Um, and that, it's not freedom from like, or it's not freedom to sort of do what you want. Um, it's not a freedom that's kind of associated with social things or political things. Um, it's actually like the penultimate stage before enlightenment. So it's like a pretty big deal. Um, yeah, it's freedom from kind of everything that's holding us back. Um, it's freedom from everything that is kind of keeping our minds small. Um, and it's freedom from being driven by greed, hatred or delusion. Um, and a freedom that is very creative and responsive and very fearless. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty huge ideal, this freedom. Um, and yeah, I personally feel like very, very drawn towards that, that ideal. Um, and it sounds brilliant, doesn't it? <laughs> a freedom that's not being driven by greed, hatred or delusion. A freedom that's very creative and responsive. Like, I really want that. Um, but I think personally, I am like constantly struck by this giant gap between like that ideal and where I actually am. Um, yeah, like I think that ideal can feel quite lofty. It can feel a bit remote or far away. Um, and I definitely sometimes feel quite a lot of pain around how big that gap can feel kind of like, ah, oh, it's this beautiful ideal, and like, I really want to be there, <laughs> but I'm not the penultimate, I'm not at the penultimate stage before enlightenment. Like, I'm over here doing all of my strange things. Um, and so, yeah, I think, so I think it's important for us to kind of hold that ideal and talk about that ideal and reflect on that ideal, um, but also to kind of, yeah, like have awareness around it being an ideal, like it's not something that we're, that we should be expecting, like, oh, great, I'll just, by Sunday, um, head home with full vermutti on the way to enlightenment. Maybe you will, um, <laughs> but I probably won't, so I'm going <laughs> to try and hold that balance a bit. Um, yeah, and I think, yeah, particularly over this past, yeah, the past year, I've been yeah, just like really struck by some of those things that um, make that ideal feel quite far away. Um, and particularly those things that feel like they're keeping my mind small um, or keeping me kind of cycling round on a bit of like an autopilot um, where I'm trying to avoid things that I think will be painful and trying to grab things that I think will bring me pleasure. Um, and you know, that's happening on a lot of different levels all the time. So it might be like pretty mundane and I'm like scrolling through Instagram, desperately looking for something that is gonna bring me a sense of like pleasure and relief. Um, or it might be that I'm like, I've seen that email from that person at work and I don't think it's gonna be very pleasant so I really don't wanna open it. <laughs> um, and so yeah, sort of noticing that tension on that mundane level, but then also how that can play out in yeah, particularly like my relationships with different people. Um, and I think the big thing that I've been kind of grappling with over the last year has been how, um, like how much I can find it difficult to engage with my emotional experience in particular. Um, so I remember when I first started meditating and then for like quite a long time afterwards being like, uh, like, I feel like meditation is something I should be doing because um, like, I really want all of this stuff that like I'm hearing at classes, I, like, I'm reading from the Buddha, like this all sounds great and it seems pretty unanimous that like meditation is a good thing to do to try and get a bit closer to it. Um, but I was also just like, oh, my meditation is really dry, like it's quite boring and I can't, I can't really get into it, like I just feel a bit numb and I don't really know what I'm supposed to be looking for. Um, and yeah, over the last year, just being like, that's not that surprising if you're like not 
finding it easy to engage with what's happening on an emotional level and just being like, oh, maybe, maybe it's not that surprising that meditation might feel a bit trickier. Um, so yeah, I was on this, um, <coughs> this retreat um, over the summer and was just really struck by um, how much, uh, or kind of what shape that struggle to engage with my emotional experience takes. Um, and so yeah, I was like having this really blissful time on this retreat. So it was at Taraloka, which some of you might have been to up in Wales. Um, and it was that week in August where it was like horrendous 40 degree temperatures in London. But in North Wales, it was actually kind of, it was brilliant. <laughs> it was like, there was a bit of breeze, it was really sunny. Um, sort of everyone was like wandering around, um, soaking in all the sun. Um, it was like really lovely people. The teaching was great. I was feeling really like, yeah, really fired up by all of the content of the retreat. Um, so I was having this, yeah, like very blissful time outside of the shrine room. Um, and then whenever I was inside the shrine room, I was like, no, because um, I'd be sitting meditating and kind of just like all this stuff was coming up and like particularly um, these things that felt like quite big old emotions that had maybe been lying quite dormant for a while and I had just gotten really good at ignoring. Um, and it felt like they'd been waiting to surface and then they were like, aha, <laughs> now's the time. Um, and so it was quite interesting because um, I could kind of see these two particular tendencies kind of cropping up as I was trying to engage. And I think that was something I was quite struck by. Like I really wanted to feel what was happening. Um, and then I was like coming up against these things that then I was like, oh, I'm doing this all the time. Like I'm doing this in my meditation and I'm definitely doing it off the cushion in other areas of my life. Um, so a big one um, would be kind of, or just is, um, sort of like numbing out from my present experience. Um, but like particularly kind of bouncing off it. It's like a kind of, I'll sink in a little bit. And then if I can sense something that's a bit unpleasant, then it's like I've bounced off immediately and I'm like back out of my body. Um, and yeah, like particularly feeling a sense of like that stemming from quite a lot of, um, like a bit of internal policing about like what I should and shouldn't feel. Um, and yeah, like a lot of, um, anxiety around being like, oh, some of these emotions might just be a bit too big and like I might get stuck in them or I might not be big enough <coughs> to hold them um, or being like, oh no, but if I feel that thing, then does it mean I'm that kind of person? And like, I don't want to be that kind of person. So I just won't acknowledge that I'm feeling that thing. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I think like a particular example is like, if I'm feeling a bit sad that I haven't seen a friend or like maybe a little bit annoyed that like we'd organized to meet up and they've had something come up at the last minute and had to pull out. And then I can feel that sadness and then I'm like, oh no, does that sadness mean that I'm really needy? <laughs> I don't want to be needy. Um, I want to be, you know, cool, self-sufficient, really easygoing, um, like definitely not sensitive and definitely not needy. Um, and so yeah, like a little bit of a war internally around accepting that that's what's happening emotionally. Um, so yeah, a bit of that. Um, and as I was meditating on this retreat, I could feel like I could feel that kind of reflex and that kind of immediate response. And I was really surprised at quite how quick it was. Like it'd be like, I'd be sitting there being like, okay, I'm ready. Like I wanna, I wanna know what's going on. I wanna drop down. Um, and then like, it was like an elastic band kind of pinging back and kind of, it'd be like, oh no, bounce out of that. Um, so yeah, kind of very strong response. And then, then if I could get past that a bit, I started to notice um, this kind of second, slightly more sneaky habit, um, which was more kind of like, it's, try, it's essentially trying to do the same thing. So I'm essentially trying not to engage with what's happening emotionally. Um, but it uh, takes this form of like pretending to engage um, so, and particularly like intellectualizing what's happening. So being like, oh, well, isn't this fascinating? Like, I can feel a bit of tightness there. That must be da 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 um, And yeah, if I like keep up here, then I'm not actually gonna feel it, but I'll be able to sound like I can feel it. Um, 
and throughout this retreat, uh, we were all having these kind of one-to-one -one conversations with experienced practitioners about what had been happening in our meditation. And so I was sort of being like, oh, you know, like, well, I've got to be able to talk about this. Like, I need to talk about this in my review. Um, so it's fine. And then I was like, wait, <laughs> you're not engaging at all with what's going on. Um, you're kind of engaging enough to intellectualize it and then just like bouncing back out in the same way. Um, so yes, and I think outside of meditation, I was then thinking about like, oh, this is playing out in so many different areas of my life. So I've got like, you know, in work, I could be like so out of tune with how I'm feeling that I'll just knee jerk response, say like, yes, I can do that. Or like, yes, of course, no problem. By tomorrow, great. Um, and then it's only when it feels like it's all gotten a bit too much and I'm sort of slightly at breaking point that I'm like, wait, <laughs> this isn't like, this isn't actually, um, yeah, like I'm exhausted. And I'm probably also a bit angry and a bit annoyed that like, oh, well, like, why am I doing all these things? Um, and so, yeah, I was noticing that quite a lot in work and being like, oh, wouldn't it be great if I could like connect with that emotional experience a bit sooner um, and then do something different about it? Um, and then, yeah, secondly, thinking about, particularly in like relationships with people I'm close to, um, like if there's been like a difficult conversation and then there's been like sort of, you know, like you've had a difficult conversation and then there's the sort of bit after where you're like talking things through and then it feels like things have settled. I was like, oh, I recurringly am like, yes, everything's fine. We've talked it all through. And then like half an hour later, I'm like, Whoa, I feel really numb. There's something going on. I don't, I don't like, I haven't like gone through everything yet. Um, and so, yeah, it was just really struck by how much that those two kind of bouncing out to not engage or touching in enough to talk about it, but still not really engage with it, um, are playing out all the time in all these different areas of life. Um, and I think one of the things that I was particularly struck by in that retreat was that it was kind of like, oh, I'm in this space where, like, this is a pattern that I've been, like, creating and reinforcing for, like, years. Um, and there are lots of reasons why that was something that I was like, yeah, this is the right way forwards at a particular time. Um, but it doesn't feel like what I want now. Um, but I'm now in this kind of like, I'm in this retreat where like the conditions are like perfect for this. Like I feel really supported. I feel really safe. I know that there are people who are really experienced that if something weird happens in my meditation, I can be like, ah, help, <laughs> this is happening and I don't know what to do. Um, and also that kind of balance of like things are quite hard inside the shrine room, but things are really nice outside the shrine room. Like I'm having a really nice time and I'm feeling really positive. I've got lots of positive emotion. Um, like those meditation reviews are like, I'm finding them really helpful. Um, so it sort of felt like, oh, like I've got, like I sort of, I can be a bit braver and things that I might have been scared of doing before. It's like those conditions, I can, I can try and be a bit more brave now. Um, and so, yeah, I was sort of able to try and sit with those, particularly like a lot of like grief and anger that was coming up. Um, and first of all, being like, oh, these are very labeled. Like I can really be like, well, that's, that really feels like anger or like that really feels like, yeah, like a deep kind of sadness. Um, but then it sort of like dropped beneath that and it was like, oh, this is just unpleasant. Like a lot of this is just not very pleasant and I don't want it. And like I'm holding it away and I've spent a really long time holding it away. Um, but actually, when I'm able to just be with the actual sensation in my body, it's actually okay. Um, and yeah, like I can, like I was really, really struck by actually and really shocked by um, like how it felt like I could hold it. Like I was like, oh no, wait, I'm like big enough to hold this. And like all of that worry <coughs> around like getting stuck in this or it feeling really overwhelming. Like it was more about the worry than it was about the actual sensation. Um, and yeah, and particularly found it, it sort of, it got to a point where I was like, oh, this is almost like a bit of an experiment, like seeing how much it changes. Like it's not static. Those, that kind of experience isn't static. It's changing quite a lot. It's shifting the bits that feel tight in one moment, then feel like they shift a little bit in the next moment. Um, 
and yeah, I really felt like I could sort of hold them, but also if I sort of knew that if it did get a bit too much, then I could sort of, yeah, like come, come a bit more back to the surface, um, soak up some meta. Um, and yeah, I think particularly that kind of, um, like I'd sort of read so much and studied so much about being like, oh yeah, like impermanence, like yeah, I'm really on board with the idea that things change and things are in flux and everything's in motion, things arise and things drop away. Um, but it felt like that was very much kind of like a very heady understanding of it. And on that retreat, it more sort of dropped down into something that I knew on a bit more of a deeper level. Um, so yeah, found that really, um, really, really powerful. And um, particularly that sensation of like, oh, it's okay, like I can be with that feeling and I don't need to uh, kind of structure my life around avoiding ever feeling anything like that. Because um, yeah, I think had lots of, yeah, sort of well-worn habits and like little constructions for avoiding being in a position where I might feel a bit angry or I might feel a bit sad. Um, and then I found that that kind of loosening feeling has, yeah, felt like a bit of a shift from like, oh, I'm either responding very reactively to like things that I don't want or things that I do want, um, to being like, oh, I can be a bit more open, I can be a bit more spacious, um, and then yeah, I can, like, I can make a bit more of a decision about how I want to respond. I don't need to be, like, knee-jerk response of, like, nope, I don't want to go there, so I'll do this instead. Um, but that there's that kind of openness. Um, and, yeah, I think I was really struck by how that all started to unfold at a point when I was kind of ready for it. And so I think that first, um, the imagery that the Buddha uses around the ocean and the first point he makes around, like, oh, the ocean gets deeper gradually and, like, the Dharma unfolds kind of little by little, step by step. And that feeling of like, oh yeah, like I don't, like I don't need to worry about being far from the ideal because it's really good to have the ideal there. But like where I'm at will like start to unfold. Um, yeah, even if it's just by like a little tiny bit. Um, so yeah, a real sense of like confidence in something shifting and unfolding, being able to feel a bit more creative around it. Um, so, that's been my experience so far. I've still got quite a lot of stuff to do around it. Um, but when we go into groups later today, um, I thought that it might be helpful to have like maybe a few questions or discussion points to reflect on together. Um, so yeah, just to put them to you now. Um, sort of, yeah, can you relate to that sensation of kind of feeling very reactive and like pushing away what you don't want and grabbing at what you think is going to be pleasant in that really automatic kind of way. Um, and do you have a sense of like how different it feels when you do have a bit more space and you can choose how to respond? Um, and then link to that, like what conditions do you think would help you to develop more of that spaciousness and creativity? Um, yeah, something for this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.